you're holding them back by standing in front of the room and teaching them. So going back to what I said, I start by reading a problem and I just let them go and I want to see what they can do. And then that's when you go in and probe. For instance, when I started with multiplication, I just read the problem. They had never seen multiplication before and they were able to solve it. And if you let them go, they can actually do more. It's important that if you disagree with someone, that is okay, we disagree a lot in math, but that you tell them why you disagree. And if you agree with them, it's important that you tell them why you agree. So when I say go, you're going to take turns talking about your strategies, remembering your focus. I want you to focus on that equation that you came up with that matches the problem and use the strategies that you use to solve the problem to see if it matches your equation. You may begin. Let me show you some of the tools I use to help facilitate this kind of learning. We've created math talk sentence starters and this is just to get the students out of their comfort zone. They don't always know what to say so there's examples like I agree with you because I disagree with you because, can you explain? So rather than them just sitting and being listeners, they're actually engaged in the conversation. And it's a two-way conversation because that's what learning should be. Are you solving for your word problem? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, because um, Lauren has $30. She spent six on a pair of shoes. How was she split among, um, among Tyler and Haley? Do you agree with her problem? In order for my students to learn deeper levels of knowledge and concepts, it's important that I'm always asking the how and the why. I'm not always teaching it first. Sometimes I do start with the teach and I do that gradual release, but most often I find that allowing the students to use their inquiry skills, no matter the subject area, it really deepens that knowledge and gives them that better understanding. As you're finishing up, discuss with the people around you. Trade cards. You either agree with them or disagree. There. Yeah. She spent six dollars. How will she split this between? When students have incorrect answers, I don't just swoop in and teach them what they did wrong. I want others to figure it out on their own. And I feel like the peer interaction sometimes coming from them it's uh, more important than coming from the teacher and I feel like they hold more value when it's coming from their own peer. So I'm constantly asking their neighbor, well, do you agree with what you're doing? And you saw that in the classroom. Um, I'm not giving them the answers. I'm asking them, well, what do you think? Because uh, I feel like a lot of times they rely on the teacher to just give them the answers and we're taking the thinking away from the students. So we're really giving the thinking back to them. Do you get your 54 flowers? So that's the unknown that you're solving for? I wonder what the equation would look like that would match that problem. The division? Yes. It will be 54 divided to 9 equals M. Why did you choose M? Because we don't know how many things each of them are. So the M represents the unknown? Yeah. I see. Okay. Jack, what have you done?